one of the must-have effects if you're a musician, you create music videos, or you just want to visualize the audio. This is the FCPX Audio Visualizer 2 plugin for Final Cut Pro. Before we dive into Final Cut Pro and see the plugin in action, how we can use it and what it can do for us, if you are interested to get this plugin, you will find a link in the description of this video down below. And if you use the coupon code EMILIOPIXEL, you will get a discount. I'm not telling you the discount. I'm going to let you be surprised. Thank you to Pixel Film Studios for always supporting this channel. And let's go into Final Cut Pro. Let's go and see how we can work with the FCPX Audio Visualizer 2 from Pixel Film Studios. As soon as you download the plugin, you will see that under the titles on the left, you have all the different adjustment layer, channel averages and full spectrum that you will need for this plugin to work. We have an adjustment layer where we can place any effects that we want our visualizers to have. We have the channel averages that are drop zone, outline pattern, shape replicator and single shape. And also we have a full spectrum that means left and right channel that we can use them as circles, as lines or as rectangles. In order to visualize the audio, the first thing that you need to do is to place the audio. You're going into the PFS FCPX Audio Visualizer 2 and from there you see two things, the channel averages and the full spectrum. What I found very useful is to create a new project, I will place the audio here, also the channel averages and the full spectrum, the generators, and then I will synchronize with the audio so I can break any parts of the audio with the generator, the visualizers, so I can work with different sections of the audio. Let's see how we're going to do that. So I'm going to bring the audio and I'm going to zoom out. Then I will bring the channel averages analyzer. I will make it the same length and I'm going to bring the full spectrum analyzer. Again, same length. Now from here, I will go, as you can see in the inspector panel on the right, and I will load and analyze audio file. I will click here and I will select the track that I'm going to use. You see analysis finished. Now the same thing, I'm going to do it for the channel averages analyzer again on the inspector panel on the right. A pro tip here, if we go into the effects, go to audio EQ and drag the channel EQ into our song and then play the song along with the analyzer, we will see exactly which ranges of frequencies we are going to use for the plugin to work the best. Load and analyze audio file. I'm selecting my audio file and done. From here, I will go to the titles. I will select, for example, the full spectrum lines. I will place them into the timeline. Then I will select the full spectrum analyzer and I will click on copy analysis data. I will select the lines, go into the spectro panel and click on paste data. Simply as that, I'm waiting for it to load. And what we're doing here is that we're synchronizing the audio to visualize it through the visualizer titles. When it finishes, we can see that now we have a left and right channel that it's going among with our music. You see the visualization. If we go into the inspector panel on the right, we will see that we have a ton of different parameters that we can change into this plugin. Now let's start, for example, we can see the left and the right frequencies that we can select the frequencies that we want to visualize. And of course, the smoothness that we want them to have. Also, the smoothness here plays a crucial role on how smooth we want the visual animation to be. So if we don't have a smoothness here, we're going to see that the peaking of the visualizer is going to be extremely fast. So if you have slow songs or you want to give that smooth, the slow into your visualizers, then adjust the smoothness accordingly. Also, we have transform controls where we can change the position and the rotation. We can select the shape if we want them to be bars or we want them to be arrows, for example. Whichever shape we select, we will have the different parameters to adjust for wherever it says arrows, for example, or bars where it was before. 
Since we have the bars selected, we go under the bars and we can change the width, the length or the edge type of the visualizer. For example, if we go here on this frame, we can change the length, the width, etc. As we scroll down, we see the style controls if we want the blend mode to be passed through or any other blend mode that they are available in Final Cut Pro. And what I like to do here, as you can see on the left channel and the right channel, the left shapes and the right shapes, I like to have them separated on different layers. So what I do is to press option, select the one layer with the lines and simply duplicate it. I will assign one on the left and one on the right. For example, here I disable the left and then on the right, I disable the right shape. I told you before that I create a new project because when I have the audio in my project, I can go and break and cut, for example, here the layer that I want with the blade and place it exactly where the audio is on my main project. This is going to be very handy for you. Now, if you see here, we have uh, the controls that we can adjust. I will go to the bottom here. The camera controls that we can adjust the position and the rotation. And why I like to use uh, different layers is that I can create, if you see as I play here, I can select this and I can adjust it to zoom in and then rotate, for example, here and place it wherever I want on the X, Y, Z and make the rotations as you see. Now I can go where the position and the rotation are. I can add keyframes and to the zoom and I can go to the beginning and set everything to zero. That way I can create an animation only for the right channel, only for one of the two lines. The controls on the inspector panel, as you see, on the right shapes, because that's what uh, this uh, layer has enabled. We can change the color if we want a different color. Also, we can change the depth of field blur amount at the bottom. We can change the focus offset, near focus, far focus. If we want to be infinite, we can change all the different parameters if we play with uh, a lot of layers and we want to make this 3D animation of the visualizers. With the plugin also, we get an adjustment layer where we can place all the different effects that we want the visualizers to have. This plugin comes with glint, glow rays and gradient as for effects. Now, what I would suggest you to do is to select the layer that you want to place the effect and press option G to create a compound clip and then place the effect and I'm going to tell you why. Because if you don't do that with the compound clip, the effects, these are titles, so they can be used as adjustment layers as well. They're going to be on the actual footage as well. To give you an example, if we go into the timeline of the intro, you see here that I placed the gradient effect as a compound clip, because if I didn't place that as a compound clip and here you see the glow, it would go into the footage on the down as well. On this example here that you saw in the beginning, if we go into the inspector panel, you will see that I have changed the length of the bars and I have played a lot with the keyframes on the position, on the depth offset that I can see. For example, here, as you can see, the depth offset gives you this very nice depth that you can use, the width and uh, the X, Y and Z angle offset. And lastly, an example of a single shape that uh, we discussed earlier is this triangle here that you saw in the beginning that it's popping. You see here, this is a single shape that we can get the data from the Channel Averages Analyzer. So what do you think about this plugin? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, I'm Emilio and I will see you.
in the next video. Γεια χαρά!